if you can tell me what it's like to be the pastor of a, a small place yes. that has 4,000 parishioners and 12 locations to serve. Yes. Um, I do my best to serve them, I guess, as, as best I can, which means um, visiting one of the missions uh, churches on Saturday and spending the whole day there, and then another on Sunday after the main mass at the main church. So I have 8 o'clock mass, and then about 10 o'clock I am at a mission church. Now, at that rate, I visit them maybe once every two or three months which means when I go, I try to take care of all the business, the baptisms, the weddings, confessions, visit, visiting the sick. And as you can imagine, uh, the mass lasts quite long. I remember one mass where I had about 100 First Holy Communions, about 60 children for baptism. I had a wedding in that same mass, and the homily lasted at least 30 minutes because I had to speak about those sacraments, but also because I wanted to say the things I needed to say for the next two months, because I wouldn't come back to that mission church for another two months. And, and so that's how I serve the people. In the meantime, in those two months, um, what do the people do for Eucharistic celebrations? On Sunday, they come together uh, in a small church or under a tree or in a classroom, and they are led in a communion service or a scripture service by a catechist. Uh, in my case, again, I was kind of short. I didn't. Ha I should, normally, I would have a catechist for each of the twelve mission churches, but I had only about seven. So some of the catechists had to take care of two, two churches. Mm -hmm. And how far apart and distance are they? The nearest was about maybe three miles, and the farthest was about uh, maybe twenty miles. But Again, I say I was lucky because uh, there are pastors who have uh, as many as uh, 40 mission churches and uh, the fathers can be uh, about three hours away on foot because it is up in the mountains and you, have, you, you, you can't ride a bicycle, you could drive a car up to a point, you can't ride a motorcycle so you have to walk. And how did you get around to your parishes? I got around to my, um, to my village churches using a scooter, a motor scooter. And I must say, a couple of times I fell off the scooter. <laughs> I hope you weren't hurt. Uh, I, was, I guess I was learning how to ride the, the scooter, but um, it was more my pride that was hurt <laughs> than, <laughs> than me physically, yes. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Yes, yes. Now, at these parishes, yes. um, did you see help come to you from the Pontifical Mission Societies? Yes. Um, my, my small parish was uh, uh, at the receiving end of much help in many ways. One of them, I spoke about church buildings. Of the 12 churches, I think when I got there, only two of them had a physical building for church. Um, in the three years I was there, with the help of uh, funds from the, from the Provision of the Faith, we were able to build three small churches. And by small, I mean 50 feet long and 25 feet wide. F brick, four walls, and that's it. Uh, we, we also had um, a, a, a stone altar. We built this, an altar with, with bricks and, yep. And how many people would worship in that uh, on a the, weekend? The larger ones would probably have about maybe two to 300 people. The smaller ones would have about a hundred people. Mm -hmm. yes, I see. Yes. Okay. So that's just one of the ways. But we also uh, had a clinic built in, in that parish. We also, now this happened after I left, where they began building a school. A parishioner donated uh, a couple of acres of land near the, the church, and they are in the process of building. I think they have four classes now. And they are building on up to having seven classes because grade school in Uganda is seven classes. Mm -hmm. Meaning seven grades? Seven grades, yes, seven grades. I see, mm -hmm. I see. And then where do they go after elementary school? They'll go to high school for six years.